Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to installment number 15 in the ICOM 7300 from A to Z series. Today we're going to be looking at the compressor function. I apologize, it's been a little bit of a delay since the last video. As you probably can tell from the picture, I'm traveling again. Although I did manage to bring most of my equipment with me. Unfortunately, I don't have my regular camera, so I'm going to have to apologize in advance for the video quality. I did this one with an iPad, and hopefully it comes out okay. So, without any further ado, let's take a look at the compressor function. First, we'll talk a little about what compression is. Audio compression is where you make soft sounds louder and loud sounds softer, so you compress the volume into a more consistent level. Now in ham radio, with compression, typically it's mostly making the soft sounds louder. You don't really need to make the loud sounds softer unless you had something that was so loud that it was going to be distorting, and you could compress it down, but that's typically not the case when you're talking into a microphone. So the compressor is used on single sideband voice so that it helps bring your average power level up by making the average volume a little bit louder when you're talking. So let's take a look at how you activate that on the 7300. You press the function button and here's the compressor button on the screen here. You press it once to turn it on, press it again to turn it off, and notice when I turn this on, the transmit bandwidth, which is the button right next to it, goes from wide to mid. The mid is the default setting with the compressor on. It doesn't actually have to be there. You've got three transmit bandwidth settings. We'll talk about those in another episode. But there's narrow, wide, and mid. And the compressor on the 7300 remembers the different setting between off and on. So, for example, if I were to set the, the compressor uh, with the compressor on, if I set the transmit bandwidth to narrow, it'll remember that the next time I go in. So, just a point to note, and they don't really talk about that in the manual, but it remembers the bandwidth setting for both compressor settings. Now, I'm going to turn the compressor back off for a moment because if you look in the manual on page 4-12, before you set the compression settings, they tell you that you should set your mic audio without the compressor and make sure your level is good. So you set the meter to the ALC function, which is the automatic limiter control, and we're Pressing the multi button here to get into the menu for power, mic gain, compressor, and monitor. And we're going to go to the mic gain. And we're on 15 meters, and it's evening here. And I've already checked that this frequency is clear. In fact, all of 15 meters is clear right now. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll let people know we're here anyway. WA2IVD testing. Now, according to the manual, we should set the mic gain so that the ALC meter is reading between 30 and 50%. It's not really marked in numbers. You can kind of use the S meter up above, but 30 to 50% you can tell visually. WA2IVD testing. Hello, test. Hello, hello, testing. One, two, three. Hello, testing. One, two, three, four, five. Hello, testing. One, two, three. Testing, 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 testing. St Hello, testing, testing, testing. So at sort of normal speech, that was between about 30 and 50% at 48% might gain. Hello, testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. There's a few peaks that went above it, but that should be pretty close. So now we're set there. So we'll get out of there. The next step is to set the meter to the compression meter. And we can turn the compressor on. Now if you press and hold the touchscreen button, it takes you back into the menu that has the compression setting and it automatically puts you on there. The other thing they don't mention in the manual, at least in this section, is if you just 
press the multi button if you touch the compressor setting that turns it on and off here and you also see the indicator come up on the display so you can actually get to the compressor to turn it on and off without ever touching the function button so let's set the compression according to the manual we want to set it so that it's between 10 and 20 db on the compression meter but not going over 20 or you'll start distorting Hello, testing. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Hello, testing one, two. Testing one, two, three, four, five. All right, so we'll leave it at about eight. All right, so now let's take a look at what this will do for us power wise. One other thing they don't mention in the manual that's kind of convenient if you press and hold the meter, it actually brings up all the meter options at once so that you can see power, ALC, the compression meter, SWR, and your transmitter current, as well as the battery voltage and the temperature of the finals. So let's take a look at this. We'll turn the compressor off and uh, notice the power, and you can also look at the transmit current on here as well. And I have, if you notice, the power is just set to 50%. Hello, testing. Testing 1, 2. WA2 IVD is testing. Whiskey Alpha 2. India Victor Delta testing. Now, hopefully you noticed the power and the current meters. Let's turn the compression on. Hello, testing. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. WA2 IVD is testing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hello, test. Whiskey Alpha 2, India, Victor Delta. So did you notice that the power meter was staying much closer to the 50% level for a lot more percentage of the time I was talking? So this will help you bust into those pile-ups. It'll also just get a little bit more power to help if somebody's having a little trouble copying you. And uh, that's really what the compressor is for. You don't want to overdo it so that you distort um, or you splatter outside of your bandwidth. Although I think splatter is probably less of an issue with the 7300 because it's fully digital. It probably confines you within your bandwidth anyway, but you're still going to have some distortion. So that's the compressor function in a nutshell. It's only for sideband voice. Uh, the compressor doesn't work in AM or FM because your power is independent of your voice modulation there. And um, you don't use it for the data modes, RIDI or sideband data, because those are steady tones already. So you don't really need compression. And that's it for compression. Well, I inadvertently provided a good demonstration of the importance of a good station ground and what can happen if you don't have all of your equipment well grounded and bonded together. Hopefully in a future episode I can show you a demonstration of how much better it is when you do bond everything together with a good station ground. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Again, I apologize for the video. I hope it was okay. And again, I appreciate all of the comments and uh, kind words that I've seen from some of you out there. Please keep those coming, and I'll be using some of the suggestions I've received in some upcoming episodes. This is Tom, WA2IVD, and thanks again for watching Ham Cured Smoke.